Hello, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video we will be covering the activities associated with recitation number one for EELE 101, Introduction to Electrical Fundamentals. What we are going to do in this activity is we are going to introduce uh, how to program a computer using C and all of the various uh, tools and commands and tunneling that we need to do in order to support all of the assignments for the first part of the recitation. So the goal of this is to get you going and write your first program but in order to do that a whole lot of things have to happen. We have to get your login figured out, we have to get you know learn a few text editor commands etc etc. Uh, again I want to emphasize that this video is targeted for somebody who is completely new to this arena, has never programmed before we're going to provide the code for you uh, you don't need to understand hundred percent of what's going on and I also encourage you to work along with the video so we're going to be installing software uh, so I want you to you know pause the video install the software uh, we're going to be typing in commands uh, learning how to use a text editor called Emacs go ahead and type along with me uh, that's kind of the best way to actually learn the material okay so if you think about what we're actually gonna do at the end of this recitation activity what I want is I want you to understand the general concept of what a computer is that's a big task but this is kind of the first part of it the first step in understanding that also I uh, we're gonna get a general concept of what the C programming language is that's a computer programming language so in order to facilitate our programming we are going to download and install uh, an SSH client called putty now you don't have to know what SSH is you don't have to know what putty is you don't even have to know what client is at this point. It's all uh, intro level, uh, but basically what that is is it's we're going to use that little. It's it's an application that we're going to use to log into a computer where we will write and execute our C programs. Okay, uh, we are, will log into the server that we're going to use for the recitation programming assignments, and it's called eele101.ece.montana.edu. Uh, and then we're going to execute some basic navigation commands using the console. So this could be the first time that you've ever interfaced with a computer using text. Okay, you've, maybe you've, you've only used like a mouse and a keyboard, or well, mouse and uh, uh, like a GUI, like Windows or Mac OS. Uh, so we're actually going to have a console, which is where you type commands and execute things on the computer. We need to type in our program so we're going to use a very low level text editor called Emacs which is it's a very powerful text editor for programming especially in C and uh, I'm assuming that you've never used it before so I'll just go through kind of a two or three basic commands for that. Then we're going to write a hello world program in C. Okay, You're going to write your own program. Actually you're I'm going to write a program, then you're going to copy my program, and then you'll just change a word in it, and that's it. You don't even need to 100% understand what's going on, because there's a lot of complexity in a, in a C program uh, that you don't need to know at this level. The best way to learn C is just write that first program, maybe you're typing, you don't even understand it, and then you execute it, and you see it run, and you say, oh, Okay, that's how it works. Then you go back, change some stuff, go back, change some stuff, and just do it over and over and over. And some of the details of what's going on within the program, you don't need to know to get started. So that's the whole approach that we're going to take. We're going to give you the code for this program and just walk you through the steps in order to execute it. Okay, we'll compile and execute. Compile, you might not even know what that means. Uh, and then if you made any errors, we'll debug it. And then finally, we need to get your source code, uh, your program file, from the computer that we're on uh, back to your own workstation so that you can upload it to the assignment folder. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. There's a whole lot of things we're going to do, but I'm going to walk you through every part of it. All right. I want to start with what a computer is. Uh, it takes a while to really fully comprehend what a computer does and all the, the complexities of it, but there's a really good video uh, that I'm going to turn over here uh, by cfclearnfree.org, and it's just like a two and a half minute video that, that does a really good job of describing what a computer is at a very high level. So let me turn this over to my colleague right now, and he will walk you through kind of a, a graphics rich description of what a computer is.
Today, computers are all around us. From desktop computers to smartphones, they are changing the way that we live our lives. But have you ever asked yourself, what exactly is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that manipulates information or data. The computer sees data as ones and zeros, but it knows how to combine them into more complex things, such as a photograph, a movie, a website, a game, and much more. Computers use a combination of hardware and software. Hardware is any physical part of the computer, which includes all of the internal components and also the external parts like the monitor and the keyboard. Software is any set of instructions that tells the hardware what to do, such as a web browser, media player, or word processor. Now, when most people say computer, they're talking about a personal computer. This can be a desktop computer or a laptop computer, which has basically the same capabilities, but in a more portable package. Personal computers come in two main styles, PC and Mac. PCs are the most common type. There are many different companies that make them, and they usually come with the Microsoft Windows operating system. Macs, or Macintosh computers, are all made by one company, Apple, and they come with the Mac OS X operating system. Computers come in many other shapes and sizes. Mobile phones, tablets, game consoles, and even TVs have built-in computers, although they may not do everything a desktop or a laptop can. There's another type of computer that plays an important role in our lives, servers. A server serves information to other computers on a network. In fact, every time you use the internet, web servers deliver the web pages that you want to see to your computer. Servers are also used in many offices to store and share files. As you can see, there are many different types of computers out there, and they affect our lives in a variety of ways. Okay, thank you to learnfree.org for that explanation. So now let's take a look at the programming language C. So first of all, uh, what is C? C is the name of a programming language, and they usually just use it as a, a capital letter C. Uh, but this is a way that you actually write code to tell a computer to do something. And the code that you write in C will be used to create a set of instructions uh, that the computer will execute. And these instructions will be the ones and zeros like you saw in, in, the, in the computer video there. Uh, since a computer only operates on ones and zeros, uh, if we feed it a set of instructions in the form of ones and zeros, it will know what to do with those and it will perform a sequence of tasks. Uh, except that we don't want to program a computer using ones and zeros. I mean, you don't sit down and type 10101011111 in order to tell the computer to do something. We need a way to program the computer using t syntax and words that are more like a human would understand it. And so that's what a programming language is, a high-level programming language. You're going to use statements like, you know, print and if and then and else and things like that and loops and uh, for loops and stuff like that where you will describe the functionality of a of a program and then what you're going to do is you're going to take that that source code uh, and you're going to compile it. And a compiler is a piece of software which will take the C program that you create and you will it will convert it into the ones and the zeros that the computer will understand and the, what the ones and zeros become what we call an executable file because you can run this executable file so if you if you create this executable and just double click on it or run it it will actually execute what you, what you intended to do okay so that's kind of the flow of what we do we we create a file and we always give it a dot c uh, uh post fix <clears throat> or file extension and that indicates to everybody involved that it is is a C programming file and then within it what we do is we just put all the syntax that we're going to use to create our our functionality and then we run a compiler and then it spits out an executable that we then run <clears throat> okay so this is fantastic we kind of have just a high level overview of what we're going to use to program the computer 
So the next question then becomes, which computer will we be programming? Okay. Well, there's you know there's a ton of different computers around, and even if we tried to com to program every individual student's computer, we would need a lot of different software to be able to make it work across all the different operating systems and versions and and stuff like that, uh, even within our class. So instead, what we're going to do is we are going to program one unified computer, and it is going to be a server. <clears throat> and the server's name just happens to be E E L E one zero one dot E C ce.montana.edu and this is a server that's located over in the computer science department what's neat about a server is that we can have all of our individual workstations and we can log into the server and we can run our program write our programs and run our programs on the server this is a Linux server and we have all everybody in the class has an account set up you you using your net ID and your current net ID password so all you got to do is log in with your you know k9 whatever uh, password, not password, but your username, and then give your consistent password, and you don't need to change anything. And and you'll have an account on here, and then you'll be able to create your program on the server, and also compile it, also run it. And then when you're done, what we'll do is we'll transfer the file back to your own workstation, your own computer, and then you can upload it to to the assignment folder. <clears throat> okay, so that's kind of the architecture that we're going to use for this course. And the first question says, well, how do I even log in? Okay, there's a lot of ways to log into this particular server, but what we want to do is we want to use a s extremely simple approach. One of the most simple approaches to log into the server is called uh, an SSH, which stands for Secure Shell, and we are going to use a tool called PuTTY. All right, and this this has just been around forever. This is one of the most simple uh, ways to to log into a Linux server. So what I'd like you to do uh, is, if you want to put this on your own computer, which I highly recommend, uh, download it from putty.org. Okay, www.putty.org. <clears throat> Doesn't run on a Mac. Okay, it runs on Windows and Linux. So you're gonna have to get used to that in engineering. Every, nothing is is made for Macs. Okay, so Macs always have to, has to have some patch to get it to work. Uh, but you can download this Putty program, and it'll come in as a .msi, which is a a file that is an install. So it's almost like what's on a, a DVD. Remember those things. But all you got to do is double click on the MSI file, <clears throat> and it'll install Putty for you. And then what you're gonna do is you'll have uh, you can launch it just at the start menu. For a Mac, uh, what some people recommend is using what they call terminal, and that's found under your utilities. And you should be able to just launch the terminal and type SSH for the server. But again. Uh, you're kind of on your own with Macs because I don't use Macs and really no so no engineering software is supported on Macs, so you got to kind of figure it out on your own. Okay, so you do that, and what's going to happen is that a window is going to come up. So let me launch mine under Start uh, Putty and then Putty, and I'll go ahead and put my window right here so you can kind of see what the actual window looks like. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into Hostname and I'm going to make sure that the SSH is is checked and it'll automatically pop populate port 22 and that's what we want to do so let's go ahead and go eele101.ece.montana.edu and then well all we do is just say open and a login screen is going to come up and this login screen just looks like this black screen that's sitting here and uh, you're going to log in with your net ID I happen to have an account that's using my last name but you won't you will have one that's your net ID and I log into this thing and here we are and you are now logged into the EC or the EELE 101 server. Now, here we are. This is like dark console command line programming, okay? This is this is uh, potentially a new way to interface with a computer for many of you. This is called this window right here. Uh, you basically type in commands and hit return and then the computer will respond. Okay, and in, at first glance, you might think, "Geez, this is like going old school." I mean, this is you know we have Windows now and Mac OS, but or iOS. But in reality, this is a very powerful way to program a computer. A lot of times in engineering, you don't need all the burden of, of the graphical user interface. You just want to write a program, grab some data, uh, analyze it, manipulate it, do something to it, and then spit out the result. You don't need to have like a, a GUI for everything that you do. And so what we're going to do is we need to learn how to navigate within the environment and so all you're gonna do is just type in 
uh, commands and then hit return. So if I typed in just some gobbledygook and hit return, it would say, oh, I thought you were trying to type in a command and it wouldn't recognize it. So the question becomes, which commands do we want to use? So here are nine basic commands that these are all you'll ever need in this class. And they are just basic navigation commands uh, when you're at a, at a command line. And, I, and you'll be able to reference this, uh, but what I'll do is I'll put this over here and I'll walk through each of them. <clears throat> the first one that I always like is a present working directory. And what you'll see is that you're going to see when you type that and hit return, it shows you where you are in the directory structure on the server. You will have a folder that is your own. For mine, it's called Lemire's, but you're going to have one that's your NetID. <clears throat> okay? And these are all located in a main folder called Home. You'll never go into that folder. But within this, you can mess around. Uh, you can create directories, create files, create your programs, etc. The other one that I always do is, is called Who Am I? And I always say Who Am I? And it tells me who I'm logged in as. And that's just kind of a warm fuzzy to just make sure, okay, where am I? Uh, did I log into the right place? Uh, and what did I log in as? Okay, so I know that. Here now is a command called ls, and this is a list command, and it will list anything that happens to be in your current directory. Okay, now in this situation, I had created something called test.txt, and that's just to show that it's there. So I actually did see something. If this is your first time logging in, you won't see anything, <clears throat> but it's just a little file. If I wanted more information on that file, I can do ll, and that is for list long or do the same thing of list everything that's in here, but it'll give you more details. So in this situation, it said, okay, you have test.txt, but it tells you when it was created, who created it, and it gives you some other information about read write capability. We don't care about that right now, but it's just ls and ll are how you see what's in there. All right, now mkdir, that stands for make directory. And what you do is you say make directory and then you give it a name of what you're doing. So let's say that I'm going to organize my recitation assignments by saying I'm going to make a folder called REC1 and that will be for recitation 1. I type MKDIR and then I go REC1 and if I, I supposedly made a directory. So now let's go ahead and do an LS and look at what happens. I have REC1 and, and my file that was there. And notice that REC1 is blue. So it's indicating it's not a file, it's a directory. If I do LL and take a look at it, I see that, oh, it's got REC1, yeah, okay, it's there. And then over here, it's denoted as a directory with the D right there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. But I'm not in that directory, I'm in my main home directory, which is under my username, Lemire's. So if I wanted to go into that rec1 directory, what I could do is I could go cd, which means change directory, and then I go rec1, and now I supposedly changed into that. If I want to check it, I go present working directory and check it out. I'm now in that folder. I'm in home Lemire's rec1. Okay, is there anything in here? Let's go ls. This thing's empty. There's nothing in here. ll, nothing in here. Total zero. Okay, I could create some stuff in here. I'm feeling good. Why don't we go back a directory to our main username uh, directory? The way you do that is you go cd and then you just go dot dot. Okay, so if I do that, I supposedly went up a directory, present working directory. I'm back. Okay, so if you ever make a directory, mkdr uh, temp, something like that, and I go, there it is. If I try to remove a file, I can do remove uh, test.txt. I'm going to remove this file, and it's like, okay it's gone. But if I try to do a remove of a directory, it won't let me. It'll say, hey man, you're trying to remove a directory. You need to be more specific that you actually want to do that. Because sometimes directories have stuff in it. So you can do remove minus R temp. And the minus R is a, is a uh, option that tells the remove command, remove the directory and everything underneath it. So if I do that, now rem uh, temp is gone. I'm going to leave REC because I'm actually going to create my uh, program in there. Okay. We are now ready to create a file. We need to, a way to create a program. Okay, so we're going to create a new file, uh, and we need to type into it. Well, 
we need a text editor so we need some way to actually enter our program we are going to use a program that's called Emacs okay Linux servers have a whole ton of text editors that are built in there there's VI there's Nano there's Vim uh, there's all sorts of them but Emacs is one it's been around for a long time there's a lot of support for it it when you first start using it you're gonna be like holy cow this is old school but it really you learn it really quickly the only way to learn it is just to play around with it over and over and over uh, and it becomes very powerful for C programming because it automatically color codes keywords okay the way you launch it is you do <clears throat> you type Emacs okay so if I come in here and I say Emacs it will actually bring up Emacs and so now I'm in this thing called a buffer and this is where I can type stuff and I can uh, get I can you know mess around enter save and all sorts of stuff but I want to get out of here I want to go back and I want to show you a different way to start it within Emacs the way that it works is you enter commands by doing control X and then control S would be well control something <clears throat> and this capital C when you go look at all the reference or all the the documentation what you'll see is this means control X control S and that would initiate a save command if you did control X control C that would close Emacs and let me show you what that would look like I want to close Emacs so I'm gonna go control X control C and now it pops me back out of it and it's like okay that was cool and I didn't really create a file there's nothing new in here and that's because I didn't write anything and I didn't save anything what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to actually create a new file and this file is going to be called hello world okay so we are going to create this thing called hello world and I'm gonna do it like this I'm gonna say e max and I'm gonna go hello underscore world dot C what this is gonna do is it's gonna create this new file for me Okay. It actually doesn't create it, it opens a file with this name, but you have to save it in order for the file to actually exist. So when I hit return, Emacs opens, and I'm ready to go. So I can start typing in here. So I'm like, okay, this is so good, I'm, I'm typing, life is good, you know, whatever, whatever. If I want to save this, what I can do is do a control X, control S, and that's right here, save file. So watch what I do here, I'm going to go control X control S and notice at the bottom it says wrote hello world.c. If I want to get out of Emacs and see if this actually worked, I'm going to go control X control C for close. And now I'm back to, at the shell. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if anything was created. Holy moly, look at that. I got my file hello world.c. I have created it. Okay, so this is this is fantastic. I'm going to remove hello world. And you're like, what? Why are you doing that? Well, it's because I put it in the wrong spot. Okay, so I'm going to remove it. And the reason I want to remove it is because I'd like to keep all my f my uh, files for this recitation in my recitation one folder. So how do I get back there? I go like this: cd into rec one, present working directory, boom, and I'm in my rec one. Now I'm going to go emacs hello world dot c, boom. I am now ready to enter a program. So let's start off <clears throat> by doing that. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. This is the program that we are gonna create. Okay, it's called a C program. You don't even need to know what this means. Okay, all you want to do is type this in. So I'm gonna take this console window and I'm gonna put it. I'll try to put it somewhere where you can actually see <laughs> the program in my console. So okay, so I got this and I got this and I'm gonna type this in here. You you do the exact same thing. I'm assuming you're uh, typing along with me. So I don't even know what any of this stuff is. I'm just like copying it down. I'm like, what? INT main? What? Don't even know what that is. Curly bracket and then print F. I don't even know. It's like, whatever. Oh, there's Hello World. All right. Whatever. And then I do this and this. And I do that. And then this. And then I go, okay, let's do it again. Print F. It's like, whatever. My name is Brock, I recognize that, uh, whatever, and then boom, boom, uh, da, 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 da. and then I want to return zero, don't even know what that is yet, I guess I'll have to come to class and learn that, or keep watching the video, and I'm done. Okay, so I've typed this thing in, and I want to save it, so I'm going to go like this, I'm going to go control X, control S, and notice it says wrote, okay, 
All right, so let's take just a second and see what we actually just did. Okay, so we typed in a program. We don't even know what C is at this point. But in, we're going to learn it by just, we type it in, we're going to run this thing, and then we're going to kind of figure out what these things are. And we're not even going to know what all of them are anyway, but we just start at some of the things that we might be able to understand. Well, when you do this uh, pound include, that's, a, that's syntax in C, in order to include some of these built-in libraries that it has. And this one that's called stdio.h is called the standard input output library. So when you you put this in a lot of your a uh, lot of your programs because it contains a whole bunch of functions that you can then call that allow you to print to the console, read from the console, write to files, read from files, create files. So it's very handy when you're trying to manipulate data that comes from files or goes to files or comes from the user or goes to the user. Okay? So that's just what that does. And there's a whole bunch of libraries that we don't need to learn about. Uh, but there it is. There's like our first thing that we learned is that there is a way to include a library and a library may contain a whole bunch of functions for us. All right, well, that was fun. If you go down here, print F, that is actually a function that is within this standard I.O. library. And what a printf is, is it writes something to the console. And what I mean by that is it'll print text back to the shell. Okay, so if I executed this, in theory what would happen is I would see the, the words hello world and then my name is Brock. But what it can also do, the, re, the way it works is that anything within the parentheses is actually what will get printed so that's how this function works and you can go look up the help menu for this function uh, and see that that's what it does but or you can just listen to me and so it, it prints what's in between the parentheses and that's kind of fun and, and that's just a very simple way you can do more with it uh, what are these guys forward slash n well it turns out that within the printf function that's how you do a line return so without that it would just print hello world and then my name is Brock on the same line well I want to put a line return okay so I'm gonna put a line return after those two and so it's like okay well I'm learning a little bit uh, another thing that's interesting about the program is that uh, notice that you have these lines of code line 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 well we call these statements we don't we don't always call them lines we call them statements that's kind of the the formal name in C and so these are statements that I put in order within my program and if I execute these something will happen some functionality will occur and that functionality was designed by me I put these statements in this program in this order to do something notice that I don't even know what return zero is uh, I'll just tell you that that's how you can end this so when you do that this program will end but to understand what return zero is we know we're not there yet so don't even worry about it I'll just tell you just put it in your program and we'll cover it later okay but these are the statements that exist within the program now what's interesting is that notice the curly brackets right here that's where you bound these particular statements so these statements are grouped within these curly brackets and that's important because they these curly brackets come associated with a name and the name is called main okay mains kind of usually what you call like the single program that you're running within your file but it's important because these these statements are associated with the name up here and this name can represent either a function or a routine Okay. And that is really about all we need to know for now. Uh, so at this point, if we don't have any errors in ours, we can actually start compiling this. Okay, so I, Emacs is interesting because it takes over your shell. Okay, so if I want to compile this, what I'm going to have to do is I'll have to go back, you know, exit it and then compile it and run it and all that sort of stuff. But you know what you can also do? You can also just uh, bring up a new shell. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to start putty again. So I start putty and I say, okay, well, let's, I, I'm going to, the last time I did it, I went ahead and said save and it'll actually put the name down here so I don't have to type it anymore. So I can just save it and then it'll hit highlight and load down there. I'm going to go ahead and open and look at this. Here comes another shell that I can use and I'll go ahead and log in again. All right, this is fun. So now it's kind of neat is I have another shell. And if I do present working directory, I'm in my main directory here, my, my name directory, and I see rec1 directory. So let's change into that rec1 ll. Holy moly, look at that. We got hello world.c. And I'm, I'm looking at the file that I've actually just created. So I'm going to move this, sh this shell kind of over here so you can still see it. <clears throat> and then over here, I am ready to compile. Okay, I am going to compile hello world. 
the compile keyword is called make. So if you type make on this Linux server, the 101 server, it has a C compiler installed and it is instantiated when you type make. So I'm going to say make hello world and I'm gonna, not going to put .c. I say there, boom boom, hello world. Alright, and now we found an error. Okay, so this is fantastic. We have an error in here. And, and this is good. I almost did that on purpose. <laughs> because when you type it in, you're going to make a mistake. So I need to come in here and I need to figure out what happened here. So it's, it's complaining something. I kind of look in here and I'm like, there's a problem in the main function uh, line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, line 6. So this number right here is telling me the line. So it's complaining about something over on line 6. And it's saying something about expected a parenthesis before n and I gotta look at this and I, I noticed that notice how the green up here encompasses everything within the parentheses oh look at what I did I accidentally put the the double quotes too early I left the slash n outside of it well I can fix that watch this I'm gonna go back over here and I'm just gonna edit it put it right there that looks much better now I'm gonna go control X control s and I wrote it. Now let's come back over here and let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to go make hello world boom. Look at what happened now. It seemed to complete if I do LL. Oh my. I now have a green hello world and the green signifies that it is an executable. So this is fantastic. I want to run that. Here's how you run an executable. You go dot slash and then you type hello world what is going to happen when I hit return boom <laughs> look at this hello world my name is Brock the program ended the program was stupid but it's it's we always use hello world to make sure that we know how to write a file save it we know how to compile it and we know how to execute it and this is almost always the first program that you always write okay so this is just fantastic we did it we have written our first program maybe it's not your first program but you did it this is so great the only problem here so like if you go into rest station you've you're gonna watch the video you've written your code and you're gonna demo it to the instructor but the last file the last part here is that you gotta get that file okay because every recitation you're gonna upload your source code and your source code is the dot C well where's our file at our file is over on this 101 server it's not on our machine and I don't want you to do something silly like well I'll just type this in again it's like no 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 we want I want the file that you actually created so how are we gonna get a file from way over in the computer science department you know it's like almost 100 yards we gotta get that thing over to the computer that you're on well we are gonna use a file transfer tool okay and you're like what file transfer what is that do I have to install more software turns out the answer is no there is a tool within the PuTTY toolset called PSFTP. Okay, PS stands for PuTTY Secure File Transfer Protocol. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. If you go into your PuTTY install folder, start PuTTY PSFTP, you can open up this PSFTP tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. <clears throat> okay, so here I am. Here is my window, and it's a little larger than what I'm recording. Let's see if I can resize it. All right, here are the commands to do it, okay? You're going to do open, and this is going to open up an FTP session with the 101 server. So I go open, eele101.ece.montana.edu, boom. Who you want to log in as? Well, I, you would give your net ID and then give your password, and here I am. Now, all of the navigation commands are the same. So I can do present working directory, okay? I can do an ls. And I look in here and do an LL. Can't do an LL. That was interesting. LS, but I can see my rec one folder. So I go, it's my rec one folders right there. So I go CD rec one, and then I go LS, and here is my buddy. Hello world. Now, here is what I need to think about. I'm logged into the server. Okay, it's over in the computer science department. All right, but I'm sitting somewhere else on campus. I want the file on the computer that I'm on right now. Okay, so what I need to do is if I go transfer this to myself, I don't know where it's really going to put it. Okay, so what we have to think about is our own working directory on our local machine. 
there are a variety of the navigation commands that still work uh, or excuse me that will show you your local information but that you precede them with an L so if I put L PWD it will give me my current local directory and you always default to the install directory of putty so see how it's at C program files putty I don't want to put my hello world.c file in the install directory I want to go somewhere else so here's what I recommend if you're on Windows here's where I suggest you put it you want to change your local directory so I'm gonna do a local CD and I am gonna do C colon backslash and I'm gonna go under users and then I'm gonna go under whatever my username is that I logged into the computer so mine is k918784 that's my net ID and then under all the Windows machines under that you're gonna have a documents folder so if I go in there it says my new local directory is C users k 91 h documents if you type it in wrong it'll give you an error so it's not gonna let you change to anywhere that's not existing so if I do local present working directory it I got it okay here is the big command to get hello world.c it's called get so I'm gonna go get and then I go hello world.c and I say return it says it took hello world.c from the server home Lemire's rec one hello world and it copied it over to local hello world.c okay so I got it now how do I see files on my own machine well that one it, you have to look at the Windows Explorer okay so if I come over here I'm gonna bring over uh, Windows Explorer and I come under so let's see I'll browse the whole thing so you can see it also C and I'm gonna go users and I'm gonna go k91h then I'm gonna go documents and lo and behold hello world.c is there and I can open that up if I opened up like a raw text editor in Windows and I drug that over I'd go drag and then there it is so I got it I got my file back the reason I did that is I need that to upload to the Dropbox okay okay this is so awesome so we're sitting here you did it okay you actually did it you have done a ton of stuff you logged in you learned what a computer was you learned what C was you logged into or you downloaded putty so you could do a, an SSH into the the one-on-one server you created directories you created a new file you learned how to use Emacs you wrote your first program you saved your first program you compiled your first program you had an error okay then you fixed the error you compiled it again you executed it you saw what it did you felt so good that you then transferred that file over to your local computer so you could upload it okay what are you gonna do now well the assignment for this week is actually to take that program and modify it and put your own name on it I feel like you can do that so instead of being Brock it's gonna be whatever your name is but then remember after you do that take the rec one quiz okay in Brightspace then you're gonna to go to your recitation section okay and you're gonna work on your program if you didn't get it working uh, and demo it to the recitation instructor I in all these videos it's better just to, to work along with me because it's, it makes a little bit more sense if you didn't work along with me it's fine too you wanted to watch the whole video to get an overview of what's going on and then you can go into your recitation section that's open time for you if you need to install the software there and get help that's fine too write the first program rewatch the video that's fine too but we want you to watch this video to get a sense of what we're trying to do take the quiz to show that you at least watch the video then go into your recitation program and work on the actual demo you demo that thing then you upload your hello world.c to the rec1 code upload and you are then done okay that is it for the recitation one activities good luck with everything